Hi, I'm Adele. I'm in the UK. I am, and now I'm going to feel my real accumulate, accumulator side coming up because I'm a behaviour and education specialist, keynote speaker, and author of Miss I Don't Give a Shit Engaging with Challenging Behaviour in Schools. And what's my name? Where do I come from? Where are you from? And I'm an alchemist, an accumulator, and a nurturer. And what I want to hear from you, right, is when you did that first quiz. And you know what? Actually, some alchemists join SMA without doing the quiz, which is always interesting in itself, too, because you kind of just got, you went, okay, I get it. Who am I, right? But when you first heard the strengths and challenges of the alchemist, what was your first big aha? So I remember very clearly watching that first video you know once you've signed up and then it's like hi you're an you're an alchemist and this is you and I cried um god yeah I cried because I think it was the first time I knew that about me I knew that I knew that I know that that's who I am but it was the first time that I'd heard it accepted in a business sense so uh maybe like uh Mattia was saying I think up to that point I had run my business from my uh, from my accumulator side and so that first video when it was essentially you gave me this permission slip of going you can be Adele and you can be a business person and then when you started talking about saving the world, that was it. I was, <laughs> it was so touching. And I remember taking it to my partner and saying to her, just, just watch this. It's me. <laughs> but I think it was just so special to hear that, not in a spiritual setting, not in a creative um, art setting or anything like that, but in a business setting. And it's, I think that's been the strongest um, thing for me um through doing doing sma as an alchemist i want to hear though about some of how these sabotages of your archetype especially before you knew what they were so it could be either you know that you commit to the wrong thing and then realize your mistake or you know you buy a million domain names or um you know you've been trapped like my friend or you know you've you've haven't read stuff and you've made mistakes like um where like where has that kind of been a little bit of your downfall in your business okay um so my evil side um is margaret thatcher and i think one of my biggest sabotages particularly at the start of this business was that the kind of alchemist side of me which could be described as arty farty, fluffy, away with the fairies, et cetera, et cetera. Like, I didn't feel that she was good enough for my business. Like, I wouldn't be taken seriously. And because I worked in the theatre before this profession, and in the theatre, she was welcomed. Of course she was, darling. Um, but then I, was, but then I um, switched careers and I became this essentially education consultant. And I'm in a position now where I'm, I'm talking about average education system and I'm advising head teachers, local authorities, like, and it all suddenly became very, very serious. And so one of the biggest sabotages that I do is that I suppress my alchemist. I don't trust her. And um, I let Maggie take over instead. And of course, Margaret Thatcher is very, she's my accumulator. And also I feel it as very much like a, a masculine, feminine energy as well within me. Um, and so the lack of trust I have for my own alchemists, and I feel like this is really connected to what you've written about, about um, witch wound, is that right? Witch wound. And just this idea, like, um, I'm reading some Audre Lorde at the moment, and she talks about um, that as women, uh, our ability to she doesn't use these words, but our ability to feel and essentially alchemize that into connection, into joy, into interaction, into um, gathering difference, that that side of us is suppressed by the patriarchy, by the heteronormative society, 
by capitalism, by, you know, name it. And so I think because I have been brought up, same as everyone in that society, my alchemist is not valued. And like Stacey was saying, internally, I have to still fight for my alchemist to get space because like conceptually as a habit, it's like the, Ma Margaret Thatcher will win because Margaret Thatcher ran our country and she was very efficient. So I should probably listen to her. Um, and then how that manifests then within my business is like this week, for example, I can feel bubbling all these incredible um, blog posts and things and, and I can feel some magic coming up and really wanting to get out there. I really want to connect with my community and support them. And what have I done this week? I've done all the kind of um, accumulators kind of tasks. I've scheduled this, I've done that and I've ticked these things off. And I haven't left space to have that alchemy. And because I don't trust it, I don't trust that, I still don't really truly trust that that brings in the money. It's like, that's the fun bit. I get to play with that occasionally. My book's called Miss I Don't Give a Shit. I'm telling you, that's like, for the, for the education system, that's radical. And I had to go through all sorts of hoops, you know, about um, books with swear words in. <laughs> but it's like, I, I can use that, but we have to get serious, really, if I want to make money. And that's that's probably my biggest sabotage, because I probably. I probably know deep down and I'm starting to learn because I've got some really good business coaches now that actually, of course, it's the alchemist that is going to be the thing, the ma the magnet. But I'm still having to work with the fact that that's not. That trust is it's like the witch wound. It is the witch wound. And here's what I want to hear from you. I want you to think of baby you, okay? Because Janet really brought up that really interesting thing about being a kid. And I think sometimes alchemists feel like they're in arrested development of going, people won't take me seriously. Grown-ups won't, won't listen to what I have to say. I'm not like, and that whole imposter syndrome thing around, you know, your childlike ideas and spirit, it could be something like that. Um, and Tell me, how did, when did this alchemy show up? How did it show up for you? And what negative feedback did you get about your alchemy? And it could have been like, oh, God, they're doing it again. Oh, and yet another thing. Um, or, you know, put that away or stop daydreaming or something like that. Because I want us to be able to connect with when, you've, when you realize that this wasn't a valuable thing or when you thought that this is something that has to stay in your childhood or it's, you know, it's not just an innate sense of who you are that is valuable in the world. Does that make sense? Um, and go wherever you want to on that. But I, I want to hear a story about your, you know, your younger self and how the alchemy was always, always there. There's so many similar themes here, aren't there? I mean, my, my childhood was just full of creation all the time. I was always creating shows, paintings, songs, poems, stories, like literally, and it would just come out of me in a way that now I have to sit and flipping pay to go to an art class to get me in the zone, to give me permission to say, Adele, it's, it's safe for me to be creative. Like I have to do all this stuff now to allow myself to do it. But I mean, when I was younger, I can just remember, um, I, could, I could make a show out of anything. And I wanted to work in theatre, and I'm from a small industrial town in the Midlands in the UK, which um, is, is working class. And so, I mean, I always used to say, I used to wear more colors than everybody else walking down the street put together. <laughs> because I had this jacket that was like a, a Joseph and his technical dream coat jacket. And I even wore it when we did Joseph as a show. Um, but it was like, I, I was so just brimming, like just pouring out, um, with this creativity and my parents were always like oh we don't know where that's come from you know and and so really um resonating with what some of you have said this this feeling of just having to turn it down and so what I did I I knew I wanted to work on the stage in theatre in some way and so the way that I kind of made this happen was I about the age of eight I decided that was what I was going to do with my life. That was going to be my career. 
And so what happened was I started to make my creativity serious. And then um, I think maybe Janet, it was you who was saying I had similar, I had a singing teacher who um, was incredibly disciplined. She really pushed me very hard. Think like stereotypical ballet matron. She was that figure. And it was always, Adele, you're not, you haven't done this right. You need to work harder. Da, 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 da. And so at a very early age, my, my creativity and my expression was turned into my work in, a neg in the negative sense of that. And when I was 13 years old, I, I mean, this is a gorgeous mixture of it, but when I was 13 years old, I set up a drama school for primary school age children. This was before like DBS checks, police checks and things. It was the 90s. And because I had that alchemy, I was 13 and I was teaching children. We put them through festivals, exams, shows, everything. Like the alchemist was just that. But also I'd created my business. <laughs> I was taking it all very seriously. I was responsible for other people's children. And so it was, it was the beginning of what as an adult, I have to constantly unpick, which is this thing is like, I, so basically I was allowed to be an alchemist as a child, but the way for me to be not too big for my boots, to make sure that I was still coming from the roots of my working class town. I mean, I didn't know anyone who did what I wanted to do. People were like, people worked in the brewery, they were hairdressers, they were, my dad's a mechanic, like real jobs, real trades. So the way that I think I, I made a bargain with myself, which was, okay, I can be creative and expressive and, and be on stage and, and motivate people and all that kind of stuff that I wanna do, as long as I package it as working hard. Um, and yeah, welcome to my twenties and thirties of <laughs> trying to undo that bargain really. <laughs> the thing that I love about alchemists is that your power doesn't wane over time. Your power only gets greater over time, which means, it makes me want to cry, which means that you guys can be the wise grandmother for other people because you're only going to get more and more powerful. And that impact is going to be so important for the, like the baby alchemists who really need to hear that or for people who don't have alchemy as a natural part of their life. And you can help them to see that that's really important and valued in the world. Oh, it makes me want to cry think about, it. but it is because it is valuable. And I think hopefully we're turning that corner into valuing things like that more again, not just the, you know, the, do the dollars and cents. So um, I, I want you guys to type this one in actually, or you can just show me by show of hands. How many domain names do you own? <laughs> okay, so Stacey's got three, two. Okay, yep, seven. All right, two. Okay, I don't cool. know. It's more than 10. <laughs> okay, that's cool. That's good. That's fine. And then the other thing I would love um, as well is, is there a character from a movie or a TV show that you really resonated with as a kid or that you saw could be like you? Um, even if it was a negative depiction, you know, in the movie, The Sound of Music, like all the nuns get together and they go, how do we solve a problem like Maria? And I just think there's something there too about going, wow, instead of how can we use someone like Maria to show that, you know, the nunnery is fun and young people can join and you can be creative and still have a person of faith Instead, they're going, <laughs> yeah, okay, how do we solve a problem like Mattia? That's brilliant. Um, and isn't that such a damaging lesson that creative people could get from so many movies and TV shows of just going, we need to, we need to solve this problem. We need to get her to get organized and bring her books on time and wear the right uniform and not go out and play with dirt. And how can we make her conform so she can be like us? And if she can't, then let's kick her out, you know? So thinking about who, who that could be as your connector. Um, so as a kid, probably, uh, probably Belle from Beauty and the Beast and the Little Mermaid. And I was just thinking that, I mean, the Little Mermaid, it's like she could envisage what it might be like to be human. 
and of course her whole society was saying don't do that um of course the only way she could do it is through a man that's a whole other issue um but then she had to go through all this horrible stuff and then even at the end even when she's given her legs it's still via her dad like it still has to be given from the man's permission in order for her to to realize herself um and joy like as an adult joy from inside out and um i do you know the inside out yeah 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 um and it was so interesting for me watching that because the fact that she is like ah, at all times and then watching how that's not always useful was a real good lesson for me because i think sometimes you were saying about how we can share our alchemy gifts to those who don't have it but also recognizing that some people don't have it and they're okay with that <laughs> I, True. I do i do have to learn that sometimes um and oh i played down in anne of green gables stacy i played her but now as an adult i really resonate with mary poppins because she is creative and she also has structure so she's my <laughs> she's my idol at the moment <laughs> so i just want to shift gears for the next 15 minutes and talk about you and and the world of entrepreneurship and the world of courses because when i was talking to the accumulators there's some really interesting stuff about what makes them join a program versus what really turns them off a program and so sometimes i find that alchemists they just feel into it and it's like yeah cool but is there something that you see either you know from um joining sma or joining boot camp or things that have turned you off that you where you haven't joined other programs or you, you took a while to join mine, I don't know. Is there something you just go, yeah, if I see that, it's not for me. Or if I see that, I go, yes, that that is for me. And and we don't have to go in any order, just literally just put your hand up or unmute yourself. I think the reason I started um money boot camp and working with you was because although you were talking about money, you didn't talk about that first. So there are businesses run by women as well um, that do similar work to you. And they start with, do you want to earn this much per month? If I hear that, I switch off. I'm like, that is not my value system. I, I cannot listen to you. So yeah, that's what you, you kind of started off more about like, I mean, what isn't your phrase now? Make money change the world. So yeah. So, are you a ruler, a connector, or a maverick? Hang on, maybe you're more of a romantic or a celebrity. Take the money personality quiz right now and find out which of the eight money archetypes you are. And then I'm gonna teach you how to profit from your strengths and make money in your business based on your natural personality. Click below and find out more.